Air duster cans like this one have been around for over 50 years, while traditional air compressors, or at least variants of them, like this one, have actually been around for centuries. But in recent years, some new products have come to market that put the power of forced air right into pocket-sized devices like these. To be clear, they're not going to replace what a traditional air compressor can do. You can't use them to power a brad nailer, a roof nailer, a framing nailer, a pneumatic driver, or anything like that. They will, however, replace a lot of the things that we use the compressor for, like blowing stuff off and blowing stuff up. Not only that, but they completely replace the need for these old things. So let's see how these new tools stack up. Just for reference, the air cans here typically cost between five and seven dollars a can. They're one time use and certain brands or certain types can be hazardous to the environment. These guys, on the other hand, can be reused over and over and their price ranges from under five dollars for a cheapo like this to fifty or hundred dollars or more depending on what you want. Also, just to be clear, nothing here is sponsored, no one has paid me to do any of this, and I paid full price for everything that you see in this video. To measure our wind speed, we're going to use our handy dandy anemometer here. This measures our wind speed, and it's not only fun to say, but perfect for a situation like this. We're going to start by using the air dusters and compare them from least expensive to most expensive, and then from there, we're going to test out our tire inflators. We'll get the wind speed on each one of those. For our testing with the anemometer today, we're trying to make this as scientific as possible. Now, obviously this is not going to be totally perfect, but I've got a board here with a hole drilled in it, so each of the nozzles is going to sit in the exact same spot, keeping it the same distance away from the blades of the anemometer. So let's get testing. Okay, we're going to start out with our barbecue fan. This is the only one that's not electric, it's hand powered. This one is $4.79. Sounds like fireworks. All right, and we got four miles an hour as our max. So obviously, you don't get a lot of bang for your buck for $4.79. Next up is our two-in-one blower fan here. This one has a vacuum on one side, and then you can attach this to the back to make it a blower. And this one is only $4.93. Okay, significantly better than the barbecue fan. So 10.0 miles per hour, not bad. Next up, at $13.97, we have the portable handheld fan. This one has a pretty slick design, produces a lot of wind speed, and it looks really nice, especially for $13.97. So this one does have a variable speed, whereas the other two did not. So let's turn this on. And see what we get. That's the most I was able to get, 12.5. I'm gonna try it with the other nozzle just to see if that makes any difference. All right, so this one has got 24.6. Next up, coming in at $15.52 is the Compressed Air Duster. I'm loving these creative names here, by the way. This one has a pretty large barrel on top with a ton of accessories that you can use it, like brushes and compressors and you name it. So for wind speed, let's see what we get here. Now on this one, you have to click through to the fourth speed, 12.7, okay. Not bad for the little $13.97 blower. Jumping up to $28.16, we have the compact handheld electric air duster slash power jet fan. Now this thing actually is really powerful. One thing I like about this one is that the nozzle on this has little magnets embedded in it right around and they just pop on there like that, which is pretty convenient. 26.8. Pretty good, 26.8 miles per hour on that one. All of these, by the way, use a USB-C cable to recharge them. Last but not least, coming in at a whopping $47.49, we have the Violent Turbofan Electric Air Duster. So this is the only one that I got that appears to be completely 3D printed. This one does have a slider here for going from highest to lowest, but one thing I noticed is when you put it in the lowest setting, it doesn't actually turn on, it doesn't do anything, and you have to move it a fair amount before it clicks on like that. Let's put this up at the full speed and see what it can do. Oh, okay, we have a speed record here, 40.9 miles per hour. Next up, we have the tire inflators. Let's see how these guys do just as blowers. We'll start out with the $30 device here. So I've got it maxed out and we'll see what it can do. 
So 8.2 miles an hour on the $30 inflator. And on this one, I'm gonna set it to its max, which is 150 PSI. This is a $40 inflator. Let's give this one a try. So only 5.1 on our more expensive $40 tire inflator here. Next up, we're gonna try a can of compressed air. We're gonna try it with and without the straw. And let's see what we get. And we ended up with 19.7. So it does a pretty decent job, definitely a fair amount of wind output. Just for good measure, literally, let's take out the straw and try it here just to make sure it's not any better. 8.9. Now let's compare these two little guys with a portable air compressor. In case you're not aware, you can get compressors like this one. This is by DeWalt and it's a two and a half gallon compressor. And this one uses batteries for power. There are no cords other than the actual air supply line. So this is a fully functioning air compressor and can do anything that any other air compressor can do in terms of being able to power things like brad nailers and nailers and sanders and any pneumatic equipment like that. It can also blow things off. <laughs> It can inflate, it can do all of those sorts of things, but it runs off a battery here. A couple things, this one's obviously like 30 times bigger than these ones. It's probably anywhere from 10 to 30 times more expensive as well, depending on what you're getting over on this side. And then on top of that, this one is pretty loud pretty much all the time. So when I turn this on, it's that noise constantly. Sorry, if you've worked with compressors before, you know that sound, and it's always running in the background and kind of annoying. So this has a lot of strengths and can do a lot of things that these guys absolutely cannot do, but for a lot of cases, these are excellent. Now, it probably wouldn't be fair to test this out without trying an actual air compressor. So I've got my handy dandy nozzle on here. This is the one that most of us use with a pretty small aperture on the nozzle. Now that's the thing you deal with with an air compressor. Is that kicking back on? But we did get 48.8 .8 miles an hour. I just realized I probably need to give this thing all it's got. So I've cranked this up to its max power. Oh my gosh. I guess that lets us know that this definitely wins. Look at that sad thing. Tragedy. Now that we've seen some of the options here, let's try these out and see what kinds of things these can do. Here are just some of the ways I found these devices to be extra useful. Cleaning off woodworking dust from your machines before vacuuming and cleaning them up. DIY projects like cleaning drywall dust. Dusting around the house. Cleaning out air filters like vacuum filters and wet dry vac filters. Blowing up inflatables of all sorts. I definitely think it's worth noting that when I inflated this raft, for example, this whole thing took about five minutes with the most powerful air duster. That said, when I then took the inflators, the tire inflators, and tried those, after 10 minutes, I still wasn't done with the first of three sections on the raft. So it is not recommended for large inflatables like this. Helping with fire starting or Dutch oven cooking. Just a quick side note on fires, we were blown away, pun intended, by how well these things work when trying to stoke some embers or get a fire going. This is some footage of my son and his friends getting a fire going from some coals that were left behind by a previous camper. And this thing did an amazing job at getting this going and keeping it going nice and strong. So if you're a camper, these things are pretty awesome. Car detailing, drying a car after washing it, cleaning out a mini split filter, PC cleaning, keyboard cleaning for those messy late night gaming binges. And of course, just making the kids laugh. One thing these aren't good at that I was a little surprised by is blowing up balloons. They require too much air pressure at that initial inflation stage to actually be able to handle these. So check this out. What happens is the air kind of gets rejected and blows out the back end. It just can't do it. It is worth... For comparison's sake, I do think it's worth noting that while an air duster can't blow up a balloon, a traditional air compressor, even on a very empty balloon, absolutely can. Now I'm pretty sure we missed some, so if you do have suggestions for other ways you would use something like this, I'd love to hear about that in the comments so we can help each other out. Now a couple of things to note on these inflators is there's a lot more to them than just the inflators themselves. So each of these has a built-in flashlight 
They have USB ports here so you can charge your phones or other devices. This one is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery and this one here is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. And one of the cool things I like about both of these is they have settings where you can just say, what do you want to inflate? Bike, a basketball, the manual setting, a truck, a car, and cycles through all of these. This one does the same thing. Kind of cool that it does that. It gives you an option to just make light work and easy work. So these are great things to have in the car. Let's compare the tire inflator versus a traditional compressor to inflate a tire from 25 to 45 PSI. We'll start out with the compressor. That was definitely light work for the compressor. This one only takes 17 seconds. This tire inflator took an amazingly long six minutes and 34 seconds to do what the compressor did in 17 seconds. That's about 23 times longer, but you can actually fit this thing in your glove box unlike the compressor. Next up, let's take a look at how long the batteries in each of these last at their full speed setting, and we'll compare that to how long a can of air duster lasts. This one has an impressive time of 15 minutes and three seconds. This one may be violent, but it is short lived. This one only lasts four minutes and 53 seconds. This one lasts at a whopping 15 minutes and 58 seconds. This one came in at 13 minutes and 14 seconds. So a nice long battery on that one. This is our longest lasting air duster yet at 20 minutes and 41 seconds. A very impressive amount of time. The can of compressed air had by far the shortest duration of any of the other products that we tested. This one only lasted one minute and 59 seconds. And keep in mind that for most of the rest of that last minute or so, it was doing next to nothing because it just loses steam as it goes. One thing to note, check out what happens when you use this for more than just a few seconds. This one was particularly impressive because it had the second strongest wind output and lasted longer than every other air duster. By the way, if you're into the fun shirts like I am, something to show that you're a DIYer but you don't take yourself too seriously, be sure to check out the merch shelf below or the links in the description where you can get your own DIY shirt. As promised, I want to give you my recommendation for what I think is probably worth your hard-earned money. Again, I paid full price for all of these. There's no sponsor, no bias here. So as for the tire inflators, I think these are really nice to have. They're not great to have around the house for inflating or different things like that, but they are probably pretty awesome for an emergency situation in your car. So if you've got a truck or a car, I would definitely keep one of these in the glove box. Keep it charged up. Use your maybe cigarette adapter to charge that up from time to time. This way you have a flashlight, you have a charger for your phone, you have a tire inflator. It's lots of functional things that you can do with this and it's probably just a good emergency tool to have. Not really helpful for much else besides that. When it comes to these guys here, I'd say skip these super cheap ones. They just don't do a lot. They're not all that useful. These last few here, I thought all of these had some good value. This one here in particular was really quite nice because this one gives you 20 minutes of time. It had the second strongest wind output and it was a pretty good value, I think. If you wanna get the best of the best, this one is definitely more powerful. This one on the end here comes in different colors and while it costs more, it definitely performs better, even if it's only for four or five minutes. And then I think a happy medium here is this really inexpensive one here that has multiple different tips on it that you can use and it's inexpensive and does at least a decent job for just little jobs of blowing things off or blowing things up around the house and has a decent battery life as well. So I'll put links to all of these in the description below if you wanna check any of these out. I will also put links to the air compressors I showed here in case these ones just aren't cutting it for your needs. Now when it comes to comparing products, I love doing that. So I've got a playlist that you can check out right over here where I bought the nicest drills from Home Depot, Lowe's and Harbor Freight and pitted them all head to head against each other to see which ones were best. So you can check out the winners from each store in this playlist right here. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.